mean to be a man? Uh, and I realize there's a lot of uh, actual debates about that on a anatomical, biological, sociological kind of scale in the world. But I'm talking about what is it? What is the essence of manhood from a biblical perspective? By the way, if you're watching this and you're not a Christian in any kind of way, you might have some views about manhood, womanhood, uh, the sexes and gender and stuff that um, that may be pretty frustrating and confusing. Maybe you've settled on some idea that you think kind of accords with either your sensibilities or with what people around you may say. But I'll tell you, if you don't have some kind of grounding based on God, the creator, who made human beings, who made sexuality, who made people male and female, you're never really going to be able to pin down a good definition of what it means to be a man. Now, let me say something to the religious person, because as much as somebody in the world might have some issues with determining what is a man, uh, religious people can have actually the same issue. Because much like uh, the world, without looking at God's standards for manhood, womanhood, and all that, can just kind of invent stuff, religious people can do the same thing. And essentially what you do is you look to people you've known who uh, you respect. And you say, oh, well, that's probably what a man is. Or that's what a woman is. Or this is what I've heard. Or this is what I kind of think. Or this Bible verse, I can kind of staple it onto some of my cultural expectations for manhood or womanhood. And that must be what it is. Is it? In the actual last story we have of King David before he passes away, in 1 Kings chapter 2, Uh, we learn about what it means to be a man. And this is a man who God holds up as, in terms of his power rankings of greatest men who ever lived, David's pretty high up there. God actually identifies this is a man after my own heart. What does it mean to be the kind of man that God looks at and says, that's what it's all about? First, or maybe to say it this way, what did David think about himself? And what did he want to pass on to other men? What is it that would make people give to God that which costs them something? What is it that would make people um, overcome their failures in a godly manner? What is it that would make people repent of their sins? What is it that would make people, what's kind of the, the guiding light that keeps people going, keeps men in particular going in the right kind of way? Listen to what David said to his son Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. David. His dying instruction said this, As for me, I'm going the way of all the earth. Be strong and be a man. All right, perfect. That's what we're looking for. Manhood. Be strong and be a man. And keep your obligation to the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes, commands, ordinances, and decrees. This is written in the law of Moses so that you will have success in everything you do and wherever you turn. And so that the Lord will fulfill his promise that he made to me. If your son guards their way to walk faithfully before me with all their heart and all their soul, you will never fail a man to have a man on the throne of Israel. David used some key words here that I think a lot of people associate with manhood or or kind of actively resist because maybe people think, oh, these words, if you kind of make these values for manhood, then it leads to uh, what's sometimes called toxic masculinity, which is kind of a little bit ambiguous term, but we kind of understand what it means when we hear people say it. Um, so words like strong, be strong and be a man. And you can think about how important that is for a lot of men, to be actually physically strong, to lift heavy weights, to uh, be maybe not even just physically strong, but emotionally strong and maybe kind of stoic and this pillar kind of figure and all that kind of stuff. Be strong. And then people say, oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. Let's encourage more men to be strong so we'll have more men who abuse those who are weaker than them or who are actually insecure if they're not the strongest man in the room or who don't really even understand what true strength is. Yeah, great, be strong. That's not going to help men. Well, just because some people misuse the notion of strength doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, a bad thing for men to pursue and to prioritize. But to be fair, David doesn't leave it at be strong. How about another word that he uses here? He says you will find success in all of your ways. Uh, success is another marker of manhood for a lot of people. How much money do you make? Uh, how have you got a promotion? What's your new job title? I don't I see you get the same thing on your LinkedIn for quite a while now. Are you moving up or are you just kind of slipping or staying steady? What's going on with you? 
Um, I mean, you could go on and on with markers of success and how important that is for men to have a sense of self-worth. And once again, we could say, well, yeah, this is what breeds a lot of the toxicity that we see in men around us is men that are so preoccupied with their measure of success, with their bank account, with their stock options, with all this kind of stuff. I'm, it's not good. We don't need men to be thinking about success. David, the man after God's own heart, why are you encouraging your son to think about being successful when we know that can just breed all kinds of insecurities and problems among men? Is that really what David tells his son to do in order to be a real man, a man after God's heart, a man as men ought to be? Is that what it is? Do you notice what actually is the guiding light that David gives to his son Solomon? Pay attention to the word of God. Pay attention to the word of God. He bookends it by talking about being faithful and being loyal to God, but that's a little bit ambiguous um, because maybe we can add that to this list of strength and success would be to have, um, you know, exemplary character. But I mean, how do you determine what that is in a man? David said, listen to what God has said. Listen to what he said centuries before. Understand the law of Moses. For us, the Bible is all this one little book and it's all kind of close to each other. David and Moses were hundreds of years separated. This was ancient literature by this point. But David says it's not ancient literature. That's the word of God. Uh, He mentions that in verse 3. He talks about the promise in verse 4 that God had made to David about his sons, which of course was also uh, a word of God. Verse 3 talks about walking in his ways and keeping his statutes his commands, his ordinances, and his decrees. David says to his son, you want to be a real man? You want to be a a man who lives a full life, a strong life, a successful life? Listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. That's what it's all about. The Apostle Paul, much later in history, would write the same thing to his young pupil, his son in the faith, Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 3. He would tell him, continue in what you have learned since childhood in the Holy Scripture, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14. Um, He told him, remember that all Scripture is breathed out by God, and it is what's profitable so that the man of God may be fully furnished or fully equipped for every good work. You want to be a real man? You want to be strong? You want to be successful? You want to be somebody who is shaped and your heart is shaped and your life is shaped to line up with God's own heart, pay attention to the scripture. Do you do that? Do you read your Bible on a regular basis? Do you think about what the scriptures have to say on a regular basis? And I mean just kind of daydreaming about it, imagining it, trying to work things out in your mind. Whenever you're facing a big decision at work or in your family or with your finances or when facing temptation or um, trying to resolve a conflict or trying to help somebody who's in trouble, Do you think about what does the scripture say? Do you go and explore what the scriptures have to say about that? Or do you just kind of think on your own or uh, go look and see what the internet has to say or ask some friends? Do you obey the scripture? In the arenas of life that you really don't want to obey, do you care about the word of God? If you want to be a real man, if you want to be a woman who encourages real manhood in the world, and manhood that would be better, you know all the discussion about toxic masculinity, implicitly, it's a cry for we want better men, real men. And the solution, frankly, in the Western world in the 21st century has been largely, to some, in some way, shape, or form, uh, either get mean and strong in that way, um, step over people and become successful in that way, or become pretty much feminine. Don't be a man. Actually pursue more feminine kinds of qualities. And we'll try to pretend they're not feminine or they're not masculine. But ultimately what we're trying to do is strip men of manhood and to make them be more like women because people recognize we need good men. So maybe the solution is let's make men more like women. I don't know because the men acting like men running around here sexually immoral, abusive, violent, selfish, self-seeking, that's not working. So we got to try something else. How about this? The something else is not to flip to some other kind of social abnormality or some sort of social um, construct that is frankly just going to create more problems and is creating more problems in the world and in society. The solution for men to be strong, to be successful, is to listen to the Word of God. 
and I know, duh, right? I mean, that's what, yeah, if you've ever listened to this podcast, if it's your first time, breeze through our stuff. We talk about this all the time. Coming back to the Word of God, this is the truth. This is the thing that shows us what life is all about. The Word of God is what is a light to our, uh, our feet and a lamp to our path. It's the thing that tells us how to go and how to be. And if you want to be a man, a real man, a man after God's own heart, learn to listen to the Word of God. After this, David um, fades out. David's gone. I mean, he had a few instructions for Solomon about how to handle uh, some people who had been misbehaving and some other things like that. But David's last words, his last breath, as you see him on his deathbed, listen to the Word of God. You want to be a man after God's own heart. You want to be a part of a world that's making better men in this world. And by the way, better women too. Listen to the Word of God. Dwell on the Word of God. Obey the Word of God. Turn to the Word of God with every trouble, every question you face. And we'll be saved in the end.